In this lesson, we're going to look at microwaves. In the last lesson, we looked at radio waves and we learned that radio waves extend from around about 10 kilometers at long wave to 10 centimeters at VHF or short wave. And now microwaves, well, they extend from around about 10 centimeters through to one centimeter as a rule of thumb. Now, since the wavelength is decreasing as we move in this direction, the frequency is increasing. So microwaves have higher frequencies than radio waves. And as a result, they're able to carry more information. So there's a lot of interest in microwave communications, particularly in this day and age of the internet and, and this age of information in which we live. So nowadays, information is relayed to us via microwave links, between transmitters and satellites which are orbiting the Earth. And so it's very important that these microwaves are able to be transmitted through the Earth's atmosphere. Now the Earth's atmosphere contains water vapour and water vapour can absorb microwaves. Now the water vapour or water molecule present in the Earth's atmosphere is able to transmit some of the microwave frequencies but absorbs others and it turns out that the water molecule transmits shorter wavelength microwave that's the higher frequency and absorbs the longer wavelength microwave that's the lower frequencies so as a very general rule of thumb the longer wavelengths that's to say the shorter frequencies of microwave are absorbed by the water molecule while the shorter wavelengths that's the higher frequencies are transmitted by the water molecule so these frequencies here these wavelengths must be used for telecommunications for communications purposes and for sending data up to satellites and back to earth again and they make use of what we call the microwave windows in the atmosphere. Okay, what happens to these longer wavelengths, around about 10 centimetres that is, when they're absorbed by the water molecule? Well, we rem remember that the water molecule is made of two atoms of hydrogen joined to an atom of oxygen via covalent bonds. And we can think about these covalent bonds, they're a little bit like springs, and the atoms of the molecule are vibrating on these springs. Now, when the molecule absorbs these microwaves, these longer wavelength microwaves, it causes the atoms to vibrate more. The amplitudes of vibrations increases and increases very quickly. So what's happening is the energy from the microwaves is being transferred to the vibrations of the water molecule, causing them to vibrate with a greater amplitude and causing the temperature of the water to increase rapidly. So this phenomenon can be used in a microwave oven. Okay, food, which contains water, is placed inside the oven. This then emits microwaves at just the right frequency to cause the atoms of the water molecules to vibrate with greater amplitudes. And so helps to cook your food really quickly. And so just to summarize briefly, we have two uses for microwaves, one of which makes use of the fact that the water molecule absorbs microwaves, and this is used by microwave ovens. And the other is for telecommunications, which makes use of the fact that microwaves are a very much higher frequency, for example, than radio VHF, and therefore can carry much more information. Now, the frequencies of microwaves used for the telecommunications purposes have to be at shorter wavelengths, that's higher frequencies, because these are transmitted, as a general rule, by water in the Earth's atmosphere. And so links can be established between transmitters and satellites and back again.